Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Unity Temple. My name is Heidi Ruley. I'm the executive director of the Unity Temple Restoration Foundation, and we are the ones presenting this um, wonderful program tonight. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to some of our funders who make programs like this possible. Um, it, this program is partially supported by the Illinois Arts Council Agency state funds for the arts tour, as well as additional contributions from the Oak Park Area Arts Council and the Alpha Wood Foundation. Um, so I just want to let you know the mission of Unity Temple Restoration Foundation is to preserve this beautiful building, which is a National Historic Landmark and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and to provide educational and cultural programming like you're seeing tonight. Uh, I'm so excited that we have three very unique and amazing holiday performances tonight. First up will be the Music Institute of Chicago Academy. The, which the, after that we will have an intermission and then we will be um, viewing a performance by Dance Avondale and also music by the Apollo Chorus. So I'm, I'm so happy to introduce the uh, directors of our uh, Unity Chamber Music Series, uh, Winston Choi and Ming Huan Xu. Good evening everybody. Thank you for joining us on such a cold, frigid evening and, and braving this weather. Uh, there is, of course, such a, a, a power to uh, live performance, and we're really thrilled that this holiday season we are able to celebrate in, in this kind of a manner. Um, I remember a year ago, we weren't sure what was going to happen with the holidays, and many things were, were suddenly abandoned at that time. So this, this is really... Um, Wonderful. Uh, as uh, Heidi was saying, we are the, the directors of the Chamber Music Series. And this is a special event because it's an intersection of the Chamber Music Series with the Performing Arts Series. And thus, it's even more festive and, and more of a celebration. Uh, so I'm going to turn this over now to my, uh, my co-artistic director as well as my wife, uh, Ming Huan. Well, if you want to open the page of the program, and I want to just um, remind you of a couple of concerts that are coming our way. Um, so the first of the next concert will be February 11th. Um, it's a Rising Stars Valentine's concert, where there are going to be a group of students from Roosevelt Chicago College of Performing Arts will be coming and performing. And there are our students, um, both Winston and I, we teach at Roosevelt University and also directors of programs there. And then the next concert is March 31st, Friday's Avalon String Quartet. They are local, but also also internationally acclaimed string quartet. They were here during pandemic virtually, but they're coming back alive. So, and then the last final concert of the season is um, Winston and I will be joined by a couple of our friends. We'll be performing uh, Messian's Quartet for the End of Time and George Crumb's Black Angels. Both pieces are actually inspired by war, and uh, Messian wrote a quartet for the end of time when he was captured in concentration camp during World War II. Actually, I will be playing a violin that survived the Holocaust. So I'm just by, you know, I have chills by just talking about it. So I hope to see you in any or all of those concerts coming up. Meanwhile, we hope you have um, a happy and joyful, relaxing, safe holiday season. And we hope you enjoy the show tonight. I would like to welcome Jim Setapin, who is the conductor and the director of the Music Institute of Chicago Academy Orchestra. Thank Hello, thank you very much, Winston and Ming Huan, for inviting us here tonight. The first half of the concert will be performances by students from the Music Institute of Chicago. MIC is a community music school that has around 2,000 students in it, everything from toddlers to senior citizens. And what you're going to hear tonight is a small part of the Music Institute called the Academy. These are high school age students who are prodigies. They really play beautifully. They play the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in a way that you'd actually want to hear it. So. Um, we are happy to be able to offer you some Beethoven this evening on the 252nd anniversary of his birth. Um, we have two piano trios which will play for you. 
and then we'll bring in the big guns and have our full string orchestra play some Bach and Mozart for you. So here we go. Good evening. My name is Matthew Hahn, and we are the Luminos Piano Trio. Today we will be performing uh, Beethoven's first movement of his first piano trio. This is Beethoven's first piece that he published, so we worked on bringing out the lyrical melodies of this early Beethoven piece while also highlighting its youthful character. Try listening to the opening motif that is reiterated throughout the piece and is at the beginning. We would like to thank our coaches, Sarah Plum and Sung Hoon Mo, for their insightful coaching and immense impact they've had on our playing. We hope you enjoy.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Mayan, and today I'm joined by the other two-thirds of my trio, Pasha and Anna. And this evening, we're very excited to be sharing the first movement of Beethoven's piano trio, Opus 11. Now, this trio was actually originally written for clarinet, cello, and piano. And in case none of you notice, that's not a clarinet. So we had to settle for violin. No, I'm just kidding. But this piece is actually very commonly played nowadays for a more traditional piano trio setup, such as ours. The nickname for this trio is Gassenhauer, which means street song, and that comes from the themes that Beethoven plays with throughout the trio, which come from German night revelers. So feel free to channel your inner 18th century night partier and do some respectful dancing in your seat. We'd like to thank our coaches, um, Elaine Felder and Sangmi Lee for all of their guidance, and we hope you enjoy our performance. Thank you. Thank you. 
as the second piece that we're going to play for you today is Melody. Melody was written by Skorik, its Ukrainian composer. He wrote it on 1882 for a movie. Movie, movie is called Busoki Perval or High Pass. Uh, right now, this melody is really popular and played by many Ukrainian musicians as an answer or our emotions toward the Russian invasion that happened to us on 2014. Um, as you can see, I'm from Ukraine and Pasha as well. We came here just a few months ago and we want to perform for you melody as our own interpretation to what is happening in Ukraine right now and I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Well, here we are. We have the full Academy Orchestra here with you. Now we're going to play for you some Bach. This is very healthy, invigorating, positive music. Bach wrote six great masterpieces for the Margrave of Brandenburg. This nobleman did not um, even acknowledge this fantastic gift. We're not even sure he even looked at it. Uh, Bach had sent it as a hopes of getting a job there. This Brandenburg is a little bit west of Berlin. 
and um, it is Bach's loss and also unfortunately all of our loss that this one guy just decided he didn't even want to look at these great masterpieces, these six Brandenburg concertos. We're going to play the third one for you. It is in three movements. The first movement is the longest and it is um, dominated by this three note motive. Da da dum. You're going to hear that a lot. Da da dum, 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 dum bum. The second movement is very short. In fact, Bach only wrote two chords. We will embellish them just a little bit with some solo violins right here. And the third movement has this wonderful, exciting, dance-like lilt to it. It's just irresistible. Here's Bach's third Brandenburg concerto.
Thank you very much. Nothing quite so healthy as Bach. Um, we're going to do a little switcheroo here. Um, some of our violists are going to go back to playing violin. Um, and we're going to treat you to a little Mozart to end our part of the program. Uh, we're going to play a divertimento, which he wrote when he was the same age as many of the students here on the stage, age 16. This is music that's meant to be enjoyed, to divert, to entertain. And as you would expect from a 16-year-old, there is a lot of um, adolescent energy and good spirits and buoyancy. But you might not expect a 16-year-old to have the kind of grace and elegance that Mozart shows us in the slow movement of this three-movement divertimento.
We are members of the Apollo Chorus of Chicago. We have the distinction of being the oldest performing arts organization in the state of Illinois. We beat the Rockford Symphony by a couple of weeks. Um, we have been performing Handel's Messiah every year uh, since 1879, as our past president, Jim, will uh, <laughs> confirm. So we will be doing uh, several selections from uh, Messiah, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. 